Evening everyone, it's British Army Table Tennis here. We're here for our final live of the series and it's with Stephen Jenkins. He's got some Commonwealth Games medals and it'll be interesting to talk about his career and what he's up to now after his playing days. I'm just waiting for Stephen to join now. It's nice to see a few have joined already. Thank you for the questions too, it's great. Hi Stephen, just going to add you now. It's just connecting, fingers crossed it goes through. Don't leave you hanging. Hi. Hi, how are you doing? You well? Yeah, good, thank you. How are you, how are you doing? Yeah, I can't complain. You know, it's been great. We've had 14 lives, so it's a good number. So thank you for joining the club. No problem. It's amazing looking at some of the ones you've interviewed, some uh, pretty special people there. So well done. It's amazing, yeah. really. Yeah, no, thank you. And, you know, we're just glad we've got all of you. You know, it's um, it's great for British Army Table Tennis. And it's, you know, we just want to spread the word about the sport as well. Um, so, as you probably, I don't know if you've seen some of our lives, but I've highlighted every time that we have a mixture from people that I haven't seen a bat before and just want to try something new. So people that are national league level, um, obviously we want to try and beat the RAF this year. <laughs> so um, Yeah, try and get some better ranked players, yeah, I can imagine. What's, what would be the highest ranked player you'd have in, say, England or the UK? Um, I'd have to get back to you on that one, so I apologise. Yeah. Um, but, um, we're not far off beating them. I think we lost 6-4 in the doubles, so we're closing in. Mm. Um, so we're getting there. You know, we did get the double uh, in 2016. You know, the ladies won on the men's team, yeah. but we're slightly... We just need the men to get it back. But they're closing in, and we're getting some new players. Good. That's fantastic. But... Um, Good luck. Yeah, sorry you broke up there. So so some of our players won't know who you are, obviously I do, but if you're happy to do an intro about your playing career and then what you're up to now, that would be amazing. Yeah, no problem. Um, I'm Stephen Jenkins, uh, two times Commonwealth bronze medalist, 20 times national champion, multiple times British champion. I was a professional, or sorry, semi-professional in Germany, Switzerland and Belgium, playing for a club abroad. And now I'm a full-time national coach for Timberlands Wales. I've been coaching for the last 15 years for organisations such as Greenhouse. Uh, I run my own business for multiple years and now um, with Table Tennis Wales as national coach. Oh, that's amazing. So um, what's it like playing like, like the Commonwealth Games? That must be so amazing, the village. And, you know, what's it like winning medals there? Yeah, it's like no other competition. Can't really, you know... It's hard to describe how amazing it actually is from the moment you walk into the village, mm. uh, meeting all the you know, stars from all the sports, and then actually getting down to play yourself and you're super focused because you're walking into a big crowd every time, so you're super motivated to win the match. Yeah. Um, you've got your family and friends watching, sometimes there. I you know, in Glasgow, my family and friends were there for the two-week duration. Um, Lovely. And then, yeah, you're playing some of the best players in the Commonwealth and some in the world. So, you know, if you can't get motivated for that and train hard a few months before mm -hmm. that, then obviously it's not quite being in the game. But it's always a massive drive for Table Lens Wales and someone like myself, even when I was a player, um, every every year I'd be thinking about the next Commonwealth now I peak for that. No, that's amazing. And uh, what would you say your achievement highlight is? Yeah, the Com two Commonwealth medals, I'd say. Um, I'd been dropped from the men's team between 2002-2003 um, on the reasons I had to uh, get a club abroad. So I signed for a club in Oxenhausen in Germany. Oh, okay. And then I improved my game. Um, and then, yeah, uh, 2004 was the first Commonwealth medal we won. Um, I think I only lost one or two matches in the team then. So I performed really well as a number three player behind Ryan Jenkins, my brother, yeah. and Adam Robertson. So we had a strong team. Um, I think we only lost out to... Uh, Singapore and I think it was India. So it was the two strongest teams at the time. Uh, we were on the bronze. Sorry, we were on the podium with England, which was which was really good. No, that's amazing. So that was my career highlight. Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine it must be, and uh, it must be a highlight 
you know, I guess you're competitive with your brother, but obviously he's come and visited us and you're welcome to as well. It's great having him on board in February. And um, yeah, what's it like, you know, being at the highest level with your brother and competing? Yeah, we've shared some amazing memories. We've been able to talk about them quite a lot, actually, in this lockdown. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Amazing trip, amazing memories, winning things together. Um, we won multiple doubles uh, tournaments in the Grand Prix in England. I think there was only 10. We won eight or nine of them. And then the team events, we won two medals, as I've said. And we had a career all-time high, uh, coming 29th in the World Championships in Osaka in 2001. Yeah. So... I've pretty much done everything with Ryan and Adam. It's been us three um, and some other players like Steve Burton and a few other players coming in. But yeah, it's been amazing sharing it with him. Um, um, yeah. yeah, he's been a bit of an inspiration to me as well. He's always been one of the best players I've ever been. Then. So he used to drive me on and, and, and push me in the training hall and say, come on, next Commonwealth or next Worlds, you know, that type of thing. So he's been really good for my career. Oh, that's great to hear. And um, it's nice to see Alison Rose drawing, so that's great. And um, yeah. so how did you get into table tennis? So, and I can see you, you both play. Did your parents play or mm. how did you get involved? Uh, my dad played. My dad is a self-taught table tennis player. Okay. He took us to the local local boys club. It's called Leicester Boys Club in the Ronda. Mm. Um, he used to take us every night. My dad's totally, whatever he does, yes. totally obsessed with it. And it's about hard work and you got to fight for what you get. And um, pretty much um, within six months, I got selected for Wales. I was happy. I was number one in Wales in oh, 10 and 12. Um, my dad was just like, that's not good enough, really. You know, he, you know, he said he was good enough, but he's like, look, there's a lot of better players in, in the UK. You need to open the eyes a little bit. So I was mm. like, right, OK. So he took me to England. Um, mm. I played the English number one, who was called Scott Friday at the time. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll take him. No problem. I beat him and... I absolutely had a hammering from him. Um, mm. But yeah, that was sort of the journey from my dad helping me, well, sorry, every day in, in the training hall in Estrid to take me away to tournaments and then saying, right, right, son, you've got to work hard now. Got to put it in the graft. And uh, same for Ryan. Yeah, my dad wouldn't allow us to, to chill in the training hall or tournaments. So, oh, so that yeah. must be where you get your driving determination from, you know. Um, what, yeah, how definitely. Would you, yeah. Uh, yeah. How would you describe yourself in one word, would you say? I was going to say ambitious in anything I do, even if it's, yes. if it's work or if it's my family or, you know, uh, table tennis, uh, whatever it is, it's I'm ambitious. I'm always wanting to achieve the next goal. Um, I'm happy, but I'm also, yeah, I don't think you should stop still. You've got to strive for bigger and better things. Um, so you wake up in the morning and you're constantly looking for that next goal and the next, the next achievement. No, that makes sense. And uh, that kind of ties in with the lockdown question. Obviously, it's been such a strange time, hasn't it, for everybody in the world. Um, so what, how have you, what have you been up to? Have you found some new hidden talents? Can you sing? Or have you been baking? You know, I don't know. <laughs> Can you play an instrument? Yeah, no. <laughs> um, not an instrument. I've been singing quite a lot for a joke, but um, no, <laughs> cooking quite a lot. I've been picking up cooking. Um, yeah. Every day I've been cooking for the family. Um, yeah, just spending time, to be honest, with the family. Um, I've got a, a young daughter. She's five months old. I've got two daughters, about one. Um, it's now five months. So it's been quite busy around the house or in the garden with them. We had the uh, swimming pool out all afternoon and nice. running around with them, spending a bit more time with them. It was nice, really, because as everybody knows who's in the table industry, it's pretty much 24-7. You don't really switch off uh, yeah. uh, every week you're thinking about it or you're going away somewhere and competing and so it's been uh, quite a nice reflection. Really. No, I agree. I think it makes you appreciate things more, doesn't it? And, um, you know, you can look at the positives and, like you say, you've got more time with family. Um, so we've had a question from Stephen G. He's put, what impact did SAS coaching business have on your, <laughs> your career? Yeah. That's Stephen Gerton. Yes, uh, that's somebody I mentioned who was in my... Yeah, he's in my. Um, he was in the team that's actually in Glasgow. The second Commonwealth medal we won, and uh, we set up our own coaching business. We had to, we had some of the best times, me and Steve, um, playing wise. He was probably my best teammate. I know Ryan and Adam are the strongest, um, the strongest ever in history. But Gerton was not only a good player; he was such a, a chill person to be around. So we used to have some great times. But yeah, the SAS training. That's where my coaching career started. Really, just giving one to ones to all the best players in in. Wales, sometimes the UK, 
some of the best para players at the time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we've got a great relationship, and uh, yeah, that was a great business. Oh, brilliant! If well, he's been spying on this live anyway, <laughs> as you can see, <laughs> no, doing good things good. about him. Yeah, yeah, no, it's great. Um, I think it's Mango. I think they're online actually. Um, apologies if I've got your name wrong, but um, they've just put mm. what sports are your favourite to watch or play, and that's away from the table tennis table, away from table tennis. Yeah. I like all sports. I can watch pretty much every everyone, apart from cricket, so I haven't offended anyone. <laughs> um, my favourite is by far tennis. Um, I just love all the athletes. I love the, I love the game. I love the scoring system. Mm. I love the long rallies. I sometimes love the short points with, with the serve, being so powerful, the ace. And yeah, I think this is virtually the perfect sport, the way it's presented, the stars, the idols and everything. It's, it's, uh, they've just got something right and that's why so many people watch it and that's why Fedra is the um, richest sportsman in the world mm -hmm. they've definitely got something right so I'd say tennis I like football I like rugby obviously being a Welshman I got to love rugby yeah you do so I love the you? international yeah um, yeah but pretty much anything that's on TV is involved in that I watch but uh, yeah, yeah. Have, you, have you been watching uh, Jamie Murray Battle of the Brits at all or not got round to that yet. So I've been watching it. It's been really good, it. actually. It's on Amazon Prime if you've got it. Uh, recommend it if uh, you know there's not much table tennis on at the moment. But um, what are your thoughts on mm. that? Just trying to get more coverage on you know uh, the BBC or Sky. You know of table tennis. Obviously, once it's back up and running. What's that with the tennis or the table tennis? The sorry, table tennis. Passing. Sorry, I probably didn't word it very well. So I'm just so um, yeah. obviously tennis is obviously. Uh, as you said, televised very well. So, you know, what oh, are your thoughts? Okay. We're trying to get it out there more on Sky and BBC Sport, you know, just to get the following and ratings up. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's got to be presented the right way. I mean, if you look at ping pong, I know some people will have a go at ping pong. Of course, it's not as skilled as table tennis. Um, if you're a table tennis player, you know the amount of spin and uh, variation, how difficult the sport is. But with ping pong, because... The average person will see a massive rally, a massive um, long point, and um, there's a big crowd there, and they drink in the crowd. A bit like darts, really. I think they've got something right there. So I think they've got to try new things and just trial and error, loads of different types of tournaments. They've got to get big sponsorships in, just like tennis. Uh, they've got to make it appealing to, to yeah. them, everybody on TV. The points are so short. You know, I absolutely love table tennis. I love it, but sometimes I have to switch a game off unless it's somebody I really admire. Yes. Um, I could be in the World Championships or Europeans, and I used to stop and watch loads of matches. Now I, I can't watch too many. That's to be a really good player. So, so, yeah, do something maybe higher in the net, so more rallies, and make it. I thought the timeout was good. I thought the 11 points was good. Just change it up a little bit to make it more exciting. No, I get you, I get you completely. So um, you mentioned to me uh, sort of offline about um, you've been coaching for 20 years. That's amazing. So you must really enjoy that. And, uh, yeah, just talk about who you're coaching right now. Um, that'll be just an insight for our viewers. For the last two years, I've been national national coach. I've been coaching every category, really, uh, from under 13 to senior, which was tough, obviously, looking after so many people, so many players. But, yeah, um, sort of the main group, the, the women's national team, men's national team. We've got some re really good players, uh, individual players, like Charlotte, uh, Chloe, Anna, um, Danielle, F, Vara, and then on the men's, you've got Callum, you've got his brother Louis, you've got Mark, you've got Josh. So you've got some great individuals um, in the men's and women's teams who, yeah, in the next couple of years, I think they do really well. I think they, 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 uh, they sign for a club abroad and they train a lot and they put their mind to it. So I've been focusing on that really, is, is trying to get ready for uh, Birmingham 2022. Um, so that's been my main focus and just trying to increase the numbers playing um, just yeah. to help the more players through in the sport because we definitely got a top end um, I remember speaking to Alan Cook and he was saying to me he's definitely got some great individual offers about filtering more and more players through um, and I think maybe we've been uh, you know, we've been sort of waiting for the next people to come through and they haven't so we've now sort of actively gone out there and, and looked for them and engaged with the clubs and the schools a little bit more so No that's a great idea Yeah um, Yeah so Table Tennis Wales have just asked a question. They put, what book is the best from your wife's collection? <laughs> <laughs> Be careful. I, 
That's Brian. Yeah, that. I had a feeling it was him. <laughs> I haven't read them all, right? So thanks for that, right? Because Vicky will probably watch this. What's the best one? I'll say the accusation of the one that's out now because from reviews, it seems to be the really, sorry, the best one. Um, before that was the argument that did that sold the most and did the best in America um, and the UK. So either the last one, the argument, or this one, the accusation. But Ryan's, Ryan's read them all, so he'll be a better judge than me on that one, to be honest. That's hilarious. Hopefully you're not in the doghouse later. <laughs> I will be, yeah. You can imagine, can you? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Just say them all next time. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. So, uh, Everyone. Yeah. Who's your favourite player on the uh, tour right now? Everyone's playing on the tour right now. Um, so I'm just trying to think. I think I'm going to go for the ones I think is most exciting to watch. Uh, I'd say Carl Durano. Okay. I could sit down and watch him. Yeah, Carl Durano from Brazil. I'd say Liam Pitchford. I do mention him a lot in training. It's exciting. His back end's incredible. Probably the best back in the world. Um, Paul Drinkle. You know, I'll mention some. UK British guy, he's amazing, so talented. So I watched some of the best British, and then in the world, obviously, you've got to love Marlon. He's incredible. Mm -hmm. He's virtually perfect in every way, and just just great to watch the way he moves. His, his yeah. power, his forearm, serve, return, it's unbelievable. You've got everything, really. So, say Marlon, Carl Durano, Pitch and Paul. And no, great. Guys, really. no, great answer. So, uh, Stefan's just asked, why mm. do you think... Welsh table tennis has took a decline since the old greenhouse days, Steve. Oof. That's Ooh. Stefan. No, yeah, no. That's Stefan I used to coach. That's a bit of a tiny cheek question. He's right, though, because we used to have a greenhouse schools uh, project in one, two, three, four. I think it was four or five schools, mm. but they were full time coaches. So I was a full time coach. My brother's full time coach. Steve Gertson was a full time coach. And then we had some assistant coaches who were great. Uh, Steve Good. Uh, sorry, not Steve Gertson. Uh, Nathan Thomas. Um, Simon Euler and, and basically we had loads of good coaches in one area in Ronda and we probably produced between I don't know, 13 and 50 national players and numerous national champions but we were training them say 20 hours every single week so they'd have I don't know, four or five one-to-ones then they'd be in lunch club every, every day after school club so they are playing a lot so unfortunately then the funding went yeah so Greenhouse is just now um, predominantly in London and unfortunately it's not in Wales. So, uh, yeah, I think we definitely had stronger numbers before, no doubt about it, but I think we've got stronger individuals now. That would yeah. be my honest opinion. You know, Garner Hersey's been number one in the world. And, you know, we didn't have that with Greenhouse, for instance. So that's just one example. But we definitely had numbers because we had the funding. No, Does that no. answer it? No, I think he's asked, testing me, Stefan. He is testing you, <laughs> know, it's not fair. Mm. They're meant to be nice to you, these people, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. Um, so, uh, we've obviously got a new few players. Uh, I've only just got involved really playing uh, in 2014. So, I think Ryan laughed at my bat last time. Um, so, what's your advice on like rubbers and bats, and what do you use? I've always used a player called Michael Mays. I think it's discontinued now. Uh, I use 10 and G05 both sides just because I like the same rubber on both sides. So it's just down, I feel in my mind it's down to my technique mm -hmm. rather than making a different rubber for, to adapt your technique, uh, if that makes sense. I'd rather just um, have the same on both sides. But my advice is don't go too fast too, too early because a lot of players will go with the fastest bats and then they develop their technique. Mm -hmm. um, and it takes a while really. So just find there's so many different bats out there, but ask for advice. And second thing, I used to test bats. Yeah. So if I was in a training hall with, I don't know, someone higher ranked than me, I'd, I'd have a look at their bat and say, can I, can I try it for 10 minutes? If you like it, then then buy it. But don't buy an impulse or don't buy them while you read in the magazines because every bat is unbelievable and perfect in the magazine. So, yeah, yeah just get advice. Mm, that, that's... Yeah, or, or other players, I would say. No, that's a great idea because obviously... Uh... While we're training in the training hall, some of the upcoming players could just get one of the um, guys that are in the army squads just to test their bat, see if it works for them. So that's a great idea. Didn't think of that one. And Brybar, our sponsor, yeah. um, they've kindly they're going to do testing sessions, so we'll utilise that and get as many people there. Yeah, that's um, excellent. I think it's on the websites like Table Tennis Daily now and other um, companies that are. Um, 
you know, reviewing them online. So they'll test different bats and then put up a review, which is excellent. That never happened when I was younger. Um, and like you say, Bree Bar and Steger and Butterfly, I think they all do these workshops. Or you can call up and say, I'm this, I have this style of play. Uh, what do you suggest? Or what you suggest for me? So it's ringing the companies and teaming up for them, really. Yeah, it's great. And uh, Tom has asked, uh, who's your favourite para player? Probably Tom Matthews. That's Tom which is that. Yeah, it's going to be Tom Matthews. He's a tight, yeah, tight in player. He's going to be unbelievable. Um, he's such a good player now. But yeah, there's so much focus and determination. I think I call him Djokovic, I think, when uh -huh. I see him. He's just okay. tunnel vision, vision all the time. And I love them all. I love all the power players. They're all great in, in Wales. Um, you know, Paul Carabanek and Bob and all them guys. And you've got Will Bailey, which we had on, and Dave Weatherall. And yeah, they're all on, were they? No, it's great. Uh, they're all great they inspire me they um, work so hard honestly every day when I was good sport Wales and Cardiff you just see them four six hours training so no, fair play to them no definitely I agree um, I just lost my train of thought there that's alright <laughs> talk, we talk about Tom Matthews too much <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not his fault I won't blame him he's <laughs> put you are so kind so that's uh I love hearts, a lot of love going around. So obviously you mentioned Djokovic there. And um, as we're slowly returning to the game, what are your thoughts on what's happened? You know, you've probably heard it in the news, what's going on. You know, it's um, does it worry you about returning back and stuff like that? Are you just going on? Yeah, I think it's a wake-up call. I think mm -hmm. it's a wake-up call. Because it has shifted from everyone sort of being so afraid and panicking and this is going to be, you know, the worst pandemic ever and, you know, to now everyone's like, oh, it's fine. Um, mm. Too much of it. And, you know, we find to go back. And I think people have to be a little bit cautious. I'm always promising what we see in that the R rate and everything is coming down. I think we have to be careful that we put the right policies and procedures in place and listen to the government guidelines. And yeah. I think even jo only today you heard about Djokovic. I'm shocked, but apparently he's apologised and yeah. that he was so casual. And, um, yeah, he's offered to pay for testing something. So he's probably not affected at a fast food. Um, but yeah, it's sad really. So I hope he has a speedy recovery. Yeah. Great tennis player. Of course. When he's not when he's not beating Federer, he's a great tennis player. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> yeah, no, it is a shame and we wish him all the best. It's just interesting to see yeah. that take on that. And I think yeah, I think it'll just highlight to so many that you've just gotta take every precaution. Um and you know, I'm sure he would have followed government advice in his country, but again it's You've got to be so careful these days, don't you? Um, You've got to be careful. Cause I think I was even saying to the, the guys when we have these webinars, you quickly say, well, table tennis is not too far. It's not far apart, really. Only a couple mm. of metres. But tennis is really far apart. So for him to, to, to catch you. Um, I don't know how he caught it, actually. Was it during play or was it during so socialising with people? I don't know the full story, to be honest. Um, I'm not sure. I know he uh, did a sort of, um, a, it was kind of a fundraiser event, um, I think, in his home mm. country with a lot of the top 10 players. Um, right. And I think uh, I think Dimitrov possibly has got it as well. So I don't know. But it, from the pictures I saw, I could be wrong. But it looked like they were very close to each other, even in their photos that they had. So maybe that was just right, a right. misjudgment, a uh, miscall. But... You know, he was trying yeah. to do good in, in the end because he raised a lot of money, but I don't know if that's come at a price. But obviously, mm. you know, he's he must have followed direction, government advice, and uh, he's put out his apology. But I think overall, I think it'll just remind people, as you've said, that we've got to take uh, big precautions and uh, make sure if you have to distance, you do it. Um, it's, yeah, that's right. But we've already had the... Yeah. We've had a bit of guidance that the Olympic players will come back first, but even even that's going to be a slow process. We may be having a full time doctor on site for the sport, so mm -hmm. it just shows how serious it, it is. And, you know, I think it's better to be safe than sorry, really. So, yeah, I think yeah, you're I right. He gets back to, yeah, yeah, I agree. I hope he gets back on top form. Um, obviously, uh, we deal with pressure in the military all the time. Um, uh, you know, especially on operations or deployments. And, um, you know, obviously when we have the opportunity to do sport, when we're not doing those things, um, obviously sport brings a different element of pressure. So have you got any tips for dealing with that and uh, the knockbacks and the highs and lows of the sport? I think it's just, 
you've got to believe in yourself because if I look back on my career, every time I won, it was kind of like I knew I was going to win or I had a chance of winning. And every mm-hmm. time I lost, so a really highly ranked player, say top 15 world, I went on and thinking it wasn't possible. So one is definitely self-belief and focus. And I think it's just doing the work, whatever you, whatever you do, if it's a tennis player, a military or your businessman, you've got to put in the hard graft every single day and you've, you've got to sort of keep striving forward. Yeah. You know, because things change, you know, and the sports will change and work can change. So you've got to keep up with the modern techniques and modern things, really. Otherwise, you get left behind. So yeah, it's quite a lot of the factors, I think, to stay focused. And then you handle the pressure. Like I said, if I didn't handle the pressure, it was, I was not, not prepared or I didn't believe. It's usually a mental thing or, like I said, preparation. Really. No, that's um, great advice. So um, are you any good at trick shots? You know, you probably see the... Uh, Pong pandemic, he does a lot of them. And are you any good at? Are you good at any? Or okay, I have to be honest. I know Ryan's gonna love it, but Ryan's the best I've seen. He, you know, he can do the old cartwheels and the ball with his legs. And... Oh, okay. So when me and Ryan used to do exhibitions, I'd say like five, five, ten a year, and I'd be the one smashing all the time, and he'd be the one doing all the tricks. Nice. You no, know, so I could do. I used to do stuff, stuff like left hand with a pen over the around the back and through the legs, but I've never mastered the cartwheel, so. Maybe I should start now in lockdown. Maybe it should be a, the next few weeks I can do a cartwheel. I'll post on Instagram. Yeah, you've the got The development to. of my cartwheel or something. Yeah, maybe I should do it. No, I think you should. Um, yeah. Yeah, let us, yeah. you know, that's a goal for you then. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, so, obviously, you've been coaching um, quite a bit. So, I just uh, had a question here. Which players have you enjoyed coaching the most? I coach. I enjoy coaching pretty much every player, to be honest. I honestly feel like I can adapt to different styles, like a really positive, aggressive player and a, a quite quiet, um, yeah, um, non-confident player. But I think over the years, it's usually someone who's really committed and they love the game and they're asking me, can we have training? And can, we, can we stay down the hall a little bit longer in tournaments? And Steve, we need to do some stretching now. And Yeah, great. Going out to the way to sort of be a better player. It's hard to name names, really. <laughs> We're still in the job, but yeah. Do I have to name names? So no, no, you learn it. You do very well. You uh, well. No. Um, so another question on the flip side: Which coaches have you enjoyed playing on the the most and enjoyed working with? Mm. They're all different. I think you take bits and pieces from every single coach. Um, I think the best coaches have worked. My dad, definitely. Mm-hmm. My dad, well, my dad, me and my brother wouldn't be anything, not, nothing at all, because he got us from nothing to national number, you know, national champion, number one. Mm-hmm. Um, but that, him, super motivated, getting us training all the time. Like I said, showing us the bigger picture. Like, I, you might be number one in Wales, there's nothing in Wales. You've got to get outside being number one in the UK and, and c- compete in Europe and the world. So it was him. And then it was Alan Griffiths, who was my full-time coach for good part of 10 years, 15 years. And he was really calming and different style. My dad, he was really calm and good in the corner, um, really relaxing and chilling me out in the corner. Um, and then Li Chao, t- Chinese coach, he was exceptional. Amazing at multi-ball and amazing at giving you confidence. Just talk to you about every single match and just a couple of players who you didn't think you could beat. He'd get the game plan right. And say you'll you'll beat him. Just do this, this, and this. He was excellent tactically, but also in the whole training hall. So Lee Chow was amazing. Um, God, I say my brother, he's on you. He's a good coach. I, I was only under Ryan in fairness for a couple of years, and it was a bit. It was it was excellent, but it was a bit weird. Obviously, he's my brother, so it was difficult yes. to work under some new course too. So, but I sure Ryan Ryan is a phenomenal coach to other people. And um, yeah. Uh, yeah, they they thought of my main coaches, really. Yeah, you'll get a good Christmas present now. No, I'm really joking. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, um, we found, you know, it was fantastic when he came down and he did a bit of multiple with the guys and the uh, players really loved it. And I was lucky to get a hit as well for a few minutes. Yeah. <laughs> but um, we'll go for a fun question now. So what's your favourite holiday destination? Uh, Maldives, as yeah. we went there for about, Seven days, absolutely stunning, absolutely stunning. And then 
somebody told me it was one of the worst islands in the Maldives. They're like, you think this is beautiful? This is nothing. I was like, right, okay. So I'm going to have to go back and see some of these most beautiful islands. Cause, yeah. Yeah, it was unreal. So Maldives would be one. But outside of that, if I could live somewhere, it'd definitely be Switzerland. It's just really? Stunning. I've never been yeah. there. Have you been to Fiji? I recommend that. That's beautiful. Um, oh, yeah. I've been to Fiji. No. No, I'll have to go. Yeah, honestly. You're my bucket list. It's paradise because we have a few Fijians, obviously, in the British Army. And, uh, you know, I joke with them and say, why the hell have you left Fiji? You know, it's amazing. It's paradise. But I get it. I do get why they've joined and their reasons. But, yeah, it's a beautiful country. It's mm. just, you know, you just didn't, I just didn't want to go home. <laughs> I just wanted to stay. <laughs> but obviously we have to Imagine, get... yeah. Why did it come over to the cold weather? I don't know. No, it's like yeah. Eustace Bolt when he's coming over to the train. He's like, it's so cold. So cold. And he's just training in Jamaica where it's boiling. Yeah, yeah. He said like I'm over the train here a few months before competition, yeah. like in London, for instance. And he's just absolutely freezing. Yeah. yeah, different climate completely. Definitely. So, do you have any fears or phobias? You know, spiders, snakes, or heights, or anything? Uh, I used to be a little bit claustrophobic, a little bit, but not not bad to be honest. Um, yeah, I love to go in the jungle. I'd be class. Really? Yeah. Oh wow. <laughs> maybe maybe rat. That, yeah, rats, and they're not nice to look at, are they? Mm -hmm. not, yeah, but apart from that. No, I'm not. That's what you'll be getting for Christmas now. <laughs> Pet rats. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, yeah, I'm not a fan of spiders, really, or um, snakes. And then, uh, uh, yeah, not a fan. They sort of are the common ones, don't they? That's where everybody struggles with this. Yeah. Yeah. If there's a spider in the house, my wife's always shouting, get a spider! And it's like absolutely tiny, but I've got to get it up to the house. So, yeah, they're the common one. Well, again, you'll be in the good books if you do that. <laughs> so, you win. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, um, someone's just asked, what was the rivalry like between you and Ryan growing up? I bet it was, uh, you both seemed very, very competitive, so I bet that was quite fun at times. Yeah, we were yeah rivals in some ways, but we sort of because Tailands was a lot to do with team events. We were we were together a lot. Like I said, the doubles that we we won together in the UK, uh, we were very successful winning most of the doubles, and then winning the Commonwealth medals. Um, we had to stick together as a team rather than. But sometimes, yeah, we'd we'd fight in training in terms of shouting at each other, get the ball on, make sure you're moving the ball, you're not playing well. It's, mm -hmm. like, uh, it's quite good. Um, I'm much more, people who know me, I'm more relaxed and chilled than Ryan. Ryan's more feisty and, yeah, it's good. It, we actually did, that's why we worked. Yeah. He's, like, telling me off for missing one shot. If I miss one shot in, tell, in 10, he'd be telling me off, which is quite good. Um, never been rivals and... So, yeah. It should find me for some reason. <laughs> is it? That's okay. That's Ryan. He's trying to give his opinion, probably. Probably. Yeah. Like but, um, yeah, we were rivals for a little bit, and then, yeah, just shake hands and get on with your life, you know, it's only sport at the end of the day, so. Yeah. Yeah. No, it makes me laugh. I've had no calls all week, and then I get one now. Typical, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Someone says you've got a phobia of DIY. Is there a funny story behind that, or did something go wrong? it. Yeah, that's Kate. Oh, <laughs> that's because uh, that's um, Kate is um, my wife's sister, and she just um, does all the DIY in my house because I'm useless, and she put up a massive dinosaur for my daughter. So we got like a splash, the splash park is closed by us. So my wife decided to buy a massive dinosaur. It's literally seven foot in the okay. garden right now. And I was like, well, I am going to play what to put it up. So Kate uh, was lovely and came over and put it up with a with a boyfriend. So oh. yeah, I'm not very practical to be honest. I probably um, couldn't change, well, I could change the light bulb, but that's about it, really. I think that's about all I can do and hammer a nail in the wall. <laughs> that's my DIY. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So I've been watching a bit of Netflix and uh, a few films. So have you been getting into any series or films that you haven't seen for a while? Um, yeah, watching Ozark, which is excellent. Really enjoying Ozark. Series 3 at the moment. And it's Michael Jordan. I'm sure everybody watched that. I watched it twice. I watched, yeah, The Last mm -hmm. Dance, Michael Jordan. I watched that twice because, yeah, just a legend. I didn't realise, I knew he was amazing, but I didn't realise he was that good. Yeah. You almost have to watch it twice to see the relationships with Scotty Pippen and, and uh, his coach. And just, that's why he's doing it, just learning from him, just taking pieces from him psychologically. And 
yeah, the confidence that they got and the game plan and yeah, the way they manage their careers, everything in that program is unbelievable. So yeah, I'd advise anybody who hasn't seen it to watch that on Netflix. It's absolutely unbelievable. No, that's awesome. So someone's just put um Tom's put, who is your biggest inspiration growing up and now? Biggest biggest inspiration in, in table tennis would be Volna. Yeah, still for me the greatest. I know I said Marlon's the complete player, but um, Bonner is just the most talented, skillful player. Um, and he was the biggest. He was the biggest celebrity. He's massive in China, even now. Yeah. Um, so it's a bit like Federer and Djokovic. Like Djokovic is taking the game, in my opinion, to another level. Yeah. But Federer is the greatest ever, and same with Volner. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, Everyone's, ringing. Everyone's ringing us now. She doesn't get the hint, my friend. <laughs> yeah. She's hopeless tonight. <laughs> no, it's all oh, good. Excellent. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, I can hear you. Oh, right, okay. Yes. It's not connected to my earphones now. Um, yeah, so um, growing up as Volna, definitely. He was the biggest inspiration to play the sport. Oh, that's awesome. So... Um, someone's just asked a couple, um, who would you play sorry who would play you when they make a film about you can't get my words out who would play me and Kate's asked that I have to say Leonardo DiCaprio he's the best he's the best actor isn't he you know, I might as well pick the best he's the one who's won the most awards and everything and he's still earning millions so yeah I say Leo Leonardo yes. DiCaprio why not he's no. the best no. No, he's done some cracking films, hasn't he? So why not? Why not? So uh, growing up, um, did you like to study? Uh, what was your favourite subject at college or school? What was it? Uh, yeah, I studied psychology. I was fascinated with um, human behaviour and the mind. And, and um, yeah, I did a degree in psychology for three years. Mm. So, yeah, and, and English as well. I was interested in English um, the irony and now my wife was an English teacher and a writer but yeah I enjoyed English in school um, but then yeah I went into psychology and then I was just obsessed with coaching I got offered a job so I went into sport then so shifted from but I have used my psychology but it shifted from psychology to working in the sporting industry which doesn't feel like a job to me you sort of wake up and it's like a hobby so it's not too bad so that's the way my career uh, went in terms of uh, education and everything do you miss competing professionally or you've kind of moved on from that, would you say? Uh, yeah, to be honest, people ask me all the time, you must miss it, you must miss it. But mm. no, I don't know because I feel so happy with what I achieved. Because yes. I was only sort of semi-professional. I was only training, tra training around work. So I'd be working 37 hours coaching the younger players. And then I'd have to train, say, I don't know, six till eight in the morning before work and then late at what? night and... So, yeah, when it came to an end, my career, I was sort of knackered and shattered. And I was like, right, I'm just going to go into coaching. I got more goals in coaching. Every goal I'd, I'd uh, had for myself as a player. So was like obviously being national champion, Commonwealth medalist, mm. um, being ranked in the top 150 was in under 21s. That was one of my goals. So when I was taking them off, I was getting to the point where I was like, well, there's not many more goals now in playing. I'd have to go full time, and that's why, yeah, I decided to go into coaching. And I didn't want to go full time, um, yeah. So I just decided to focus on on coaching. Then that's amazing. You managed to balance the both and then win all these titles and medals. So uh, that's just impre so impressive. Um, I'm making a question of somebody else now, and um, they said, you know, if you did get arrested, let's say, <laughs> what do you think it would be for if you did? arrested uh, probably be drunken and disorderly probably some random country in uh, Hungary or something like that where I just enjoyed myself let my hair down for five minutes mm. and it's like four o'clock in the morning I've lost my phone which I always do I always seem to lose my phone on trips and then yeah it's probably a tap on the shoulder I probably haven't done much wrong but um, police officer's like right come with me mate <laughs> lock me up for the night a little bit hard work Yes. I've done something wrong. Um, but yeah, it'd probably be that on a night out, I'd imagine. That's hilarious. So um, in the you know, army, we do like a good drink now and then, you know, just to chat about what we've been up to and catch up with everyone. So what's your favourite drink? What do you like? 
at the moment I'm drinking uh, gin and tonic, a lot of it. It might be the hot weather, but loads yeah. and loads of ice. Got to have loads of ice um, with a bit of lime on the yeah, pink gin I've been drinking. Yeah, tonic I like that. Water. Yeah, that's lovely. I do love a bottle of red wine. It's got to be a really nice bottle. So I do like my red wine, but it's a bit too hot for wine at the moment. So, yeah, either cold beer at the moment or, like I said, pink gin. It has to be loads of ice. I'm really fussy. Uh, yeah, too much. Yeah. No, not of ice. I'm not drinking it. Really? Definitely not. Well, uh, no. I have to add a load of fruit in. You know, you can get the bags of summer fruits and the strawberries. I have to put a load of them in iced fruit. It's amazing. Oh, summer fruits. Yeah, summer they're fruits nice as well. Again, yeah. you have to have loads of ice in it. Yeah, it's it's so bad because... I need to get a measuring um, bit because I obviously put a bit too much gin in, so I've not got the measuring <laughs> so good. So I'm... yeah, funny enough, you're right. Only recently I've got a measure for my gin. I was just like pouring it in and yeah, not realizing how much was in there. And, and then, then by... thinking, right, my bottle's gone in like two or three nights. I better start measuring it. So yeah, yeah it's a good idea that is. I know I'm. I'm trying to have a ban off Amazon, but I might have to go on because, um, like you say, my gin bottles going down quite quickly <laughs> on, get on the early evening. The supermarket, get a few in, get a stock in, yeah. I know. There's yeah. so many different flavours now with the gins. I, I haven't tried them. I seem to stick to just normal or pink gin, but yeah, some of my friends and family seem to have loads of different flavours, so yeah. I'll have to try a few of the different ones now. Yeah, I, I, I just love it. It's so refreshing. It's just like having um, just juice or something, you know, it's just, it's just so nice. And that's the yeah. problem because you just think it's uh, just lemonade and it's not. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, in a couple of hours, you're feeling it. <laughs> you're feeling it. Do Wake you? Up with a headache. Oh, yeah. Well, that was more. I usually get headaches if I have shots. So, do you like your shots or do you stay away from them now? <sighs> to be honest, and this is the thing as well. I'm sure everybody's the same. But for me, I never think about having a shot. I never do. And then it's always someone in, in a bar or a club and they'll get a shot in or they'll say, do you want a shot? And I have to be drunk to say yes. That's a problem. And then it tips you over the edge. Yeah. <laughs> so you, if I'm not drunk, yeah, I'll, um, I'll just say, no, I don't want thanks and pass it to somebody who definitely wants it. But back in the day, yeah, of course, in my 20s, yeah, Jack the lad, you're like, yeah, come on, let's get the get the shots in, let's get some donuts, and you just try and get drunk as quick as possible when you're younger. But I'm 38 now with kids, so I've calmed down a little bit. Yeah, I think yeah. about the next morning if one of the girls is screaming at like half four, five in the morning. Yeah, and I've had that tequila. It's not good. No, it's not, not good, a good so. morning, is it? <laughs> no, I've, definitely I've, not. I've had that with work, you know, after a work yeah. party, and you know, I'm like, I'm not having any shots, and then I'm five later and then it's a disastrous morning obviously i get the job done um but look a bit tired hard <laughs> yeah it's difficult yeah heavy yeah. head you know like right tidy tablets another sleep oh it's difficult though yeah i know i think someone said that. yeah someone said oh have you got a cold i said no i won't oh, i won't say the rest of it but you get the gist i was like no yeah. still <laughs> not feel like i'm in the bar <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got to let your hair down sometimes and then get back to the work the next day. So someone's just asked, yeah. uh, Stefan, he's just said, what's your idea to get Nationals entries up and on bringing old players back to increase numbers? Just got to make the National Championship look more attractive. I think England have done it well. You know, when I speak to the guys, they say there's not enough players playing. But I think we've got to make it more attractive in terms of the flooring has got to be really good. Got to get it televised. I think we have to get the players walking in with music. Yes. I think um, try and get more people watching it. Because when I was younger and when Ryan was younger, when we were playing national finals, you'd seriously have like two, 300 people watching it. Um, now, yeah, sometimes you're struggling to get 50 watching it. So it's got to be more... I think it's got to be advertised earlier through the year. I think it is speaking to to players and say saying to them like what would you like in a national championship so it's, it's you know it's, it does move on you know, things move on and i think it stayed the same the national championship yes. looks the same now as what it did 20 years ago so it's on our agenda actually we keep talking about what we can do to improve it and make it look better so yeah those are the main things really you can't do much else you know it's only we only got a limited budget and everything um yeah, but yeah really... definitely certain things like the flooring and the way it looks and get people walking and standing on a podium at the end and i think getting people to stay to the final as well and playing the finals at the same time as the last few years i know we've had some feedback where 
say the quarter final of the men's be playing and then the women's final be playing. So the timings has to be perfect. The schedule has to be perfect. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And uh, um, if for ourselves, I think um, stuff like tennis and other major sports, they obviously get the numbers, but we're not doing too bad. I think we had 70 at our last event, but uh, we still Good. need to increase it. Um, so we're not satisfied with that number. But um, obviously, since we start, started it up again in 2014, we had 35. So we are increasing, but you're right. I think advertising it early is key. I think I agree with I you. I think advertising early. And again, what I missed out there, I think I mentioned earlier, is getting you know, a big sponsor. We have yes. had some amazing events in the UK. Uh, like the Heritage Oil Tournament. Uh, that was going on for years and years and years, but it was like an oil company sponsoring it. So you had all the big players, all the world's best players, and you know, well, yeah. certainly the best UK players were coming to enter it. And like I said, by the ping pong championships, mm. um, you've got so many, so much money involved in it. So everybody wants to play it. Everybody wants to go and watch it. They have a really good time, good weekend, you know, food, drinks for the lads type of thing in the crowd, just like the darts. And so it has to be appealing for not just the player, for the, for the um, audience as well. Yeah, no, I think you're right there. I think um, you can make it more of a dark setting and you have the music. I think they do that with yeah. the, uh, the England side and they have music when the players come out and I think it just brightens it up a bit. And um, yeah, yeah, I think maybe Amazon Prime, big shout out to them, maybe get you guys on Amazon Prime, you know. Definitely, yeah. Or something like that, you know, start it up maybe. That will help. Everyone's going on about you singing here. So Alan just said, uh, you thought to yourself as a bit of a singer. Give us one of your racist tunes. You know, are you going to be brave? <laughs> oh, I don't think I could do that on, on live uh, Instagram. Oh. My voice has gone a little bit funny, Alid. I can't, can't sing. Alid is the best singer. Oh, Stan, me I think your brother's put Stand By Me. <laughs> Stand By Me Oasis, yeah. Me oh. and Ryan used to sing her. I yeah. used to try and play with the guitar, but I was useless. I uh, started learning the guitar for a couple of years, but mm. yeah, I didn't stick at it really. Didn't have uh, didn't have the skills. I think I got Dave Weatherill to sing actually. I did. Did I you? Sang an Oasis song. So you, come on, uh, <laughs> don't be shy. What did he say? They're going, come on, Jenks boy, um, and can Jezza beat Stephen? And then he's like, come on, come on, give give us a little song. Let's cheer everyone up. You know, it's been a tough day. <laughs> he just oh sang Wonderwall. Wonderwall it was. But he said Weatherall instead. I think Weatherall sang. It's that Weatherall sang. It was Wonderwall. Yeah. yeah. He's a brave man. Did he yeah. have a good voice? Yeah, he was all right. I'm sure he sang. I'll probably play it back now when he never sang anything. And it was, <laughs> I just made it up. No, but I'm sure he did. <laughs> oh, my earphones back. They've been off for a while. I can't hear you. <laughs> can you hear me? I can hear you. I can't hear you singing. <laughs> Sorry, that's why. Oh, you want me to sing? <laughs> yeah, they, your supporters are asking you to sing. I think you should support them. I've supported <laughs> you tonight. And Ali just said, Oh my God. Don't change the subject, come on. And if you want to grab a gin, if it'll help you, that's more than fine. Grab a gin. Is it? All my gin is out, Ali, bye. <laughs> Can't sing. Can't no. sing live on Instagram. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> oh, my God. Just Can't be done, guys. <laughs> Come on, it can. Right then. <laughs> <laughs> so you've done the microphone for you. Who's done it? Um, I think it's Table Tennis Wales, so Ryan. He's put a microphone. He's getting you all set, ready for the stage. <laughs> tell Ryan to get on. Can we add him? We could do a duet Tell him. I don't, I don't know if we can. Shall we try it? Yeah, let's get Ryan on, yeah. Let's see if he'll come on. He'll sing. I don't he know. loves it. Wonderwall is always done. No, I don't think I can. You can only do two, oh. so... Oh, OK. What we'll do is... Are you happy to do a duet after and then post it? Yeah, that's fair enough. Is that, is that good deal? That's a good deal. If I sing now, my kids will be aware. I'll wake them up. That's my excuse. Yeah, so we'll hold yeah, it Yeah, that. we'll do it. Right. We'll, yeah, we'll definitely do a duet. 
we'll post it. Perfect. We'll hold you to that. Um, <laughs> someone's just asked, um, if you were to join the armed forces, which service and trade would you choose? Very good question. I'd oh, just be a sniper. I'd have to be a sniper. <laughs> That's the thing in the service and trade, is it? I just see that in films. <laughs> just be out of the way where I don't have to fight anyone. And I could just take people out when I wanted to. Is that all right? Is that, is that okay? Fair enough. Well, uh... Sounds a bit brutal, doesn't it? Well, you probably, if you want an easy life, I join the RAF. I think that's what Ant's in. Right. And, uh, yeah, yeah. 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 So I think I'll I think my mate's in the RAF. Yeah. Good pension. I think he's only working until 50, is it? I can't remember what he said, but yeah, great job. Yeah. And um, in the army, you know, we're grafted sometimes <laughs> to work hard. Got to graft the, a bit harder. Yeah. And then the Navy, you know, uh, um, you know, they're always on cruises now, I'm only joking. That's just the uh, joke we have about the services. Isn't it? <laughs> the rapper always on leave and uh, we're always working hard. <laughs> Made of rubbish, really. No, we all do our bit, so uh, it's just good banter. Yeah. So someone's just put, who's got the most in the bank out of you, Ryan? That's a bit of a personal question, Stefan. <laughs> yeah, we used to joke to the boys who was the richest in the Ronda. It's definitely me. Definitely. I was wind by enough. He's been through a divorce. His wife took his wife took half of his money. Really? That's harsh, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's, um, yeah, it's definitely me. Ryan's loaded, though, only right. But um, oh, I don't know. Money's not important, is it? Oh. It's only, only bit, only bit you need to be happy. No, I agree. It's not all about money, is it? It's about having no. good people around you and family and being happy mm. in what you do, like job-wise and stuff. Yeah. Okay, Alid, Alid, he loves it. He, he can't stop uh, typing. Um, he's just put maybe if you don't s song, I think he's meant to say sing. Give us your sing. best dance move. Can you do the robot? Robot, is it? <laughs> I don't have to put it. Yeah, I, I'll do all that robot. Can you see it? No, I can't see you. Oh, I can now. There we go. Right, we're having the robot, are we? You yeah. see me? Yeah, three, two, one, go! <laughs> How was that for a robot? Is that good? good? It was a good effort. <laughs> Better than I could. Totally weird. I don't think I've ever done a robot in an interview before. <laughs> well, <laughs> it, with British Army Table Tennis, we like to mix things up. Guys, what did you think about? Right. Put your comments. What did you think? <laughs> um, I wouldn't wake up the kids, so I can do a robot. If I sing, I'll wake up the kids. Uh, yeah, exactly. good, good excuse. You should just say you have to warm your vocals up. You know, that's what yeah. you should have said. Uh, oh, yeah. start doing my vocal training now. Yeah. Not only just a coach, table tennis coach, you do singing too. Um, who was the best player you have ever played? Uh, yeah, probably at the time. It was probably uh, Liam Pitchford. Okay. Because he was top 50 in the world in Glasgow I was 250 or 300 at the time. Um, so he was way ahead of me. So probably him at that mm -hmm. moment. Um, I played a guy called Kyneth as well, who was, he might have been the highest. I think he was 34 in the world. Oh, okay. So it should have been 36, 37. So Kyneth was, yeah, the best player. I played. But I played other legends like, like Matthew Side and uh, Alan Cook, Carl Preen. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah, oh, sorry, I just thought one, Gao Ning. Yeah, I played Gao Ning when he was top 10 in the world. And that was uh, <laughs> that was amazing playing Gao Ning. I remember being 9 7 up in the first set. And the, the next two balls I hit literally didn't even reach the net. His serve was that spinning. So he obviously kept his serves when he was in trouble. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> it's just amazing being on the table with someone who's top 10 in the world. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. No great answers. So someone's just put, is it? I'm not sure, sorry, who that is, but they've just put, you ain't coming on my stag with those moves. That's quite funny. <laughs> don't worry, my moves get better when I've had a few drinks. I'm only on the ward and coffee, so give me yeah. some slack. I know. You do get a lot better. Yeah, give him a break, and Tom's put, you yeah. definitely get arrested for them moves. So, uh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as in, yeah, that's what, what I'd be arrested for, yeah. Yeah. Lock me up, lock me up and throw away the key for them moves. Ah, okay. It's Ben who said that about the stag do. 
Does that... What did he say? What was his question? But oh, right, Ben. Yeah, it's gone on Ben Stag. Dude, bless, yeah. bless him about uh, two months ago. But um, that's my brother-in-law. Um, yeah, he uh, unfortunately because of COVID, he couldn't marry my sister-in-law. So um, yeah, the wedding's off till next year. So don't worry, Ben. We'll have a stag do next year, and it's in Butlin. So yeah, it's going to be a wild one. And you've got time to practice the dance moves because they're obviously not up to scratch for him. <laughs> no, no, after watching JT in the next two weeks. Yeah, definitely. But um, if you've got any more questions, we've only got four minutes left and then this will uh, cut off. So it's been great chatting to you tonight. Um, so thank you for your time. And it's nice to start these lives with your brother and then we finish with the other brother. So it's a nice yeah. way to finish. Oh, thank you. And Liam's just joined when we finish. I love it. And, you know, I just, you know, say thanks for joining us tonight and you're welcome to visit, you know, whether it's yourself or your, yeah, with your brother. And we'd yeah. love to have you come down and meet everybody and, you know, if you're happy to have a hit. Yeah, we'd definitely some... love to come down. Yeah, we'll bring some players down and challenge them and I'd love to challenge all the players and give them any advice that I can. Yeah. If... That'd be great. Yeah, I know Ryan said something about having um, possibly a fixture in a training camp just before the inter-services. And because we want to be at the RAF, we just keep emphasising that. So uh, I think with all the help we can get, we'll get there. Because I think they lost by one doubles, I think, last year. Yeah, all right. We'll, we'll just focus on the doubles then when I come down. Yeah. Like I said, me and Ryan had some success, so we'll just of train course. you up on the doubles. Is, yeah, yeah, this is why we need That's you. What so. we'll do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> definitely, definitely. And um, yeah, I still can't believe Liam's just joined. That's funny. <laughs> But, uh, ah. <laughs> you know, um, no, it's great that he's joined and he was part of, obviously, the great lineup we had. So, um, yeah, have you got Yeah, anything? I was talking about him earlier as well, wasn't I? Yeah, you were. And, you know, you'll have to watch it back to see what you were saying. It was all good, Liam, don't worry. But, uh, yeah, I was saying I played you, Liam. Yeah, 2014. I played many times, actually. So, yeah, yeah. He's, he's great what he's doing now. I'm it is. In the world. It's oh, amazing, isn't doing it? Okay. He's doing okay. He's a bad player. He's all right, isn't he? No, he's, he's all right. Amazing. He's all right. Yeah, he's not bad. I can't <laughs> believe I got him on the live. You know what I mean? It's amazing. And all of you, it's just fantastic, you know, because it'll certainly help the profile of our sport and stuff like that. So, um, no. Yeah, so well done, you. too. That's, that's a great lineup. Like I said at the start, to get everybody talking about the sport and the positive things. So. Yeah, and that's what it's we. Really well, then. Oh, thank you. We'd like to say we just want to support you guys and it's, we appreciate it back. And we just want to spread the word about the great game of table tennis um, do you have anything yeah. for your followers because we've got about two minutes left thanks for all the challenging questions I didn't expect to come on here and dance and <laughs> luckily I got up to singing I thought yeah. I was just going to answer questions about table tennis and sport and my life and, but yeah that was a good interview oh, uh, yeah. I'm definitely going to train, train now on my dancing moves definitely for the next couple of uh, stacks or competitions when I'm away so yeah. Thanks to everybody answer, asking those questions. Yeah, Make sure everybody stays safe in these weird, weird times. But um, as we were talking about earlier with Djokovic, nobody's yeah. too safe. So be careful and um, take care of yourself and enjoy the last few weeks, months, however long it is in lockdown and do what you can. Yeah. No, no, that's a great way to finish. And I think, uh, I think your teammates just joined, actually. And... Uh, yeah, so don't forget the singing as well with your brother. So, uh, right, get I upload a video. It's going to be an Oasis song. We're going to have the wigs. I'm going to have to practice the guitar. I got it upstairs. Collect that'll, that'll, that'll be amazing. It's going to be a full, full video. Yeah, it's going to be the bomb. We can't wait. And if you could just do a little mention because it's Armed Forces Day on Saturday, that would be amazing. And we'll share it. We might, I'm going to see if a few players don't mind getting involved with that and we can support Armed Forces Day. Um, yeah, of course. That'll be really all. kind. Yeah. My pleasure. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, thanks again for your time. Um, all the best, and thank you for answering all these tricky questions. <laughs> no problem at all. Enjoy your gin. I'm gonna. I think I'll have one now. But, yeah. Uh, think... Yeah. Thanks for all the questions, and yeah, been lovely uh, answering all the questions. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. It's been great, and uh, you've earned a gin. So take care. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Take care now. And you. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Wow, what a great interview that was. And that's, the, that's come to the end of the lives. 
and that was number 14. So thanks to all the table tennis players, you know, the England, a few of the Welsh players, it's just been outstanding the support and keep spreading the word about this fantastic sport and we'll keep posting a lot on social media and, you know, stay safe guys and hopefully see you on a live 